obviously the fans only see the 280 characters you get on Twitter, but when you describe performance as good, like on, on Saturday, what is it in particular that you're, you're picking out from that game was good? Well, we won every duel, all the duels. Uh, we won the possession battle. We had more shots, more shots on target. Uh, the only thing we lost was the only thing that matters, really. So from a performance standpoint, um, the goal we gave up was uh, Aiden closed down out wide, let his guy cut inside on him, and at that point, the back four was a bit overzealous, and, and we talked about it, we showed him on film. Um, you know, tactically, I thought the approach was good. Um, the plan was right. The players, for the most part, uh, did well. We're still making very basic technical mistakes, and uh, but I think a lot of this comes down to for anybody that's you know watching our game is we're settling for very very difficult chances. The one you know we had an overlapping run with a cutback that I think Kalistri got onto was a brilliant chance, and you know a, a two or three feet to the left or the right that's in the back of the net, um, and for them they hit a shot that you know six inches to the right or left it's saved or it's wide so it's it was just it seems to, to be the way things are going right now um, again it's the most important thing is for us all to realize um, we have to keep moving forward when you're in difficult moments the more difficult you make it the more changes you make the worse it gets and you have to get back to what you do and, and, and keep it simple you know and uh, keep working on the basics and so this week uh, we'll do a lot of shooting and a lot of finishing. Coach, as you head into kind of continue getting into the season, I know we just worked here with Posey. Can you talk about, I know you've been rising to dealing with some injuries, can you talk about the decision to kind of bring him in on loan from Nashville SC? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. So I, I've known Chance is the director of scouting for them for a long time, back to his days of playing at UCLA and then uh, sporting Kansas City. Uh, Mike Jacobs is also a good friend who's, who's the president of soccer. And um, so we reached out to them about, you know, possibilities of getting a player. When they brought up Cozy's name, um, I've watched him before. I knew I know what he brings as far as tenacity and work rate. He's, you know, their coach Gary Smith speaks extremely highly of him and and says he's there's no one that's going to work harder. And uh, that's all I really needed to hear because that's what this team needs right now. Is um, I, and I heard him. You know, you don't. Yes, it's nice to have nice guys, but right now we need guys that are going to fight and compete and, and get after it. And I think that's what he really does. And. Um, our medical team spoke with their medical team. We got it all clear. He's been in full training for three weeks. So we, we know he's fully fit, and we're glad to have him. Can you talk a little bit about what you expect his role to be in terms of right now with injuries, and then also once you guys... He'll be a central midfielder. Yeah, he's an 8-10 for us. And, and he's a, really a box-to-box. -box. He's kind of a right-footed Aiden Quinn. And how, how, much, or how many minutes do you think he'll get once you guys get back to health? They all fight to earn minutes, you know. I don't, uh, I don't predetermine it. I don't make promises. Nashville knew that. They sent him here hopefully to get games. And right now he's, uh, I thought he was really good when he went in the game. He moved the ball really well for us. I expect uh, that he'll get a, a good opportunity this week to compete for a starting position. Coach, with fan appreciation night coming up, how how much of an impact do the fans have on your organization and your team? They're everything you know that's why we do this it's you know I, I come to work every day even when we're we're not winning games or we're struggling as you know compared to the bar that we've set in years past uh, I get up every morning because of the fans you know and um, I want to be here I want to compete I want to do the best that I can for them and um, and make them proud you know that's all that really matters to me and um, I know that in order to do that I have to focus on the team the, the chemistry the psychology and you know, making them understand that right now it's it's stick it stick to what we do and, and let's just be the best at, at what we do. And um, I think the guys are starting to understand it. And you know, they were very very frustrated we didn't win this past Saturday, and um, we had to go and show them some film and show them some things that they actually did pretty well, and and then break down the mistake that we made. So um, for me, the fans are everything. You know, and, and I love it. Uh, win, lose or draw, they they they're supportive critical at times but but that comes with the territory when you're in a position like as you said you know there's a lot of individual mistakes maybe more than specific kind of problems under the hood how do you deal with that then as a coach to try and get them over that individual meetings film uh, work on specific things position specific so today for example it was finishing but 
Uh, a lot of heading from the defenders, a lot of crossing from the fullbacks. Uh, the midfielders were taking first touch outside the box and shooting. The, the, the forwards and the wingers were doing a lot of stuff inside the box and near post runs. And again, it's what happens with all players is when things are not working, they try to change. And uh, where Greg Hurst used to make near post runs all the time, now he's trying to stop and check back. Or wingers are staying at the top of the 18, and um, they don't realize that. You know, if they change, if one person makes a change, it changes it for five or six other guys. But but like I, well, the mistakes I'm talking about are literally, where's your first touch? Does it move you back? Does it move you forward? Does it move you away from pressure? Does it move you into pressure? And these are these are the things that um, we have to train with more intensity. We have to push them harder uh, so they experience a game-like environment all week. And I think that the team is is getting there. And and that's. You know, with the change of staff, I think we had a lot of staff change. We had, you know, more than half the team change. It's it's a little bit of a different culture that I have to push them. I have to push them harder. Talk about kind of just training versus the game. Have you seen struggles within training, and then it carries over to the game, or is it more they're doing well in training and it happens in the game? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, some weeks are really good. Others, I you know, going into the San Antonio road trip, the intensity was massive. We actually changed to a point system for the week for competition. And I saw, you know, a really heightened sense of focus and concentration. Um, you know, last week leading into Birmingham, I think they felt good about what had happened in Hartford, and and I didn't push them hard enough. And I think this week you're going to see probably a really focused and concentrated group. But we're playing one of the best teams in the league in El Paso, who's got some very good veteran players. We better be concentrated, or it won't go well for us. Coach, just an update on Arturo. I know he's projected out six to eight weeks. Any update on kind of what? dealing with and how's he, how he's been progressing on those early? Um, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, I'd have to talk to the medical team about how much I could share. I was surprised because they told you this, what his injuries were, but it, it's, he's, he's, um, it's mostly, it's not a break or, or tear, but, but pretty close in, in his foot. So he, it's things that if we were to push him to come back quicker, uh, then he'd end up with four or five months out. And I know him and Iroquozzi kind of play, or kind of both settled mm -hmm. in the midfield. Can you talk about how, kind of with his injury, with Iroquozzi's addition, kind of how you've seen that group kind of progress and mm -hmm. kind of the, the whole Well, it was part of the reason Iroquozzi came to be. Yeah. Uh, when, as soon as we found out what, uh, when Arturo came off the field in Hartford and what the possible diagnosis was, you know, Bobby and I were on the phone that night talking to MLS clubs about a possible loan. What are you? Uh, when you're in a position where you're struggling to score goals over the past few weeks, how much more pressure does that put on you guys when you lose your number 10? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, our total would have been a big impact in that game because we really had them pinned back and we just needed somebody to break down a player in the 18, which is what he does really well. Uh, unfortunately for our is he's not, he's not been in that, uh, getting that opportunity as often as we want because he's coming back deep to get the ball. So uh, at Hartford, I thought he started well. He was in really, really good positions. He, you know, he had a couple of good chances, and, and then the injury. So um, when you lose a player like this, uh, you just the next guy has to step up and get it done. And, and, and uh, for us, we really didn't have a next guy because Kalistris had to play right back, right wing, center mid, and um, I think we're we're burning his gas pretty fast. So um, it'll be nice for him to kind of settle back into a wide spot, and I think Irakozi will will step in and. Um, as soon as we get Lambert back, uh, you know we're, we're getting closer. But um, it, it's not been easy when you're when you play the way we play and you're missing a few key pieces. You can see the impact. What kind of in terms of El Paso? You'd say they're a very veteran team. They've been strong this year. Yeah. Most goals scored in the league. Is there anything in particular you're kind of talking about during training this week to try and prepare? Yeah. Well, I mean, they they everything goes through Richie Ryan in the midfield and. You know, Josue Gomez is a fantastic wide player for them. They've switched to more of a 4-3-3 than they, than they traditionally were. Solinac is, is a dynamite player, um, you know, and, and he's a very, very good veteran out of the MLS. He knows how to score goals, and, uh, and they let their outside backs get forward. They're very similar to us in, uh, in their style and their approach to the game, probably even more possession-oriented. So a team like that, if you sit back, they're just going to pick you apart. So especially at home, we're going to have to be aggressive. Is there a part of you that's relieved you're coming up against a team that will play a more open style of football rather than sitting back? 
Well, I guarantee you if they score first, you'll see moments where they'll sit and look to counter because now they've, they've gotten a little bit more pragmatic than they used to be with Lowry. So, um, you know, they've got a good coach. Uh, he's, they'll, they'll change styles throughout the game. Um, so it's, it's important for us, I think, is, is to start fast and make sure that we don't have any of those mental breakdowns. What was behind the decision then last week to let Jonah go? Performance-based. You know, uh, every player played 50% of the games in preseason, so for anyone to say that he didn't get an opportunity, he played quite a bit. Um, we evaluated him throughout the season in opportunities and uh, just didn't feel that, you know, with Kevin Lambert being gone, that we could rely on Jonathan to step into midfield and, and be a holding midfielder for us. Lateral quickness was a bit of an issue. Uh, we tried. We did a lot of extra private stuff with him, and he worked extremely too hard, probably too hard to his detriment. Um, it's a sometimes it's a sign when players are staying after doing a bunch of extra work on their own that you know, either they're not giving everything in training or they're not doing the things that they really need to be doing so um, I love him as a person he's a competitor he was a great teammate and but these are uh, these are the horrible decisions that I have to make at times and um, you know I spoke to him and, and I thought we, we treated him extremely well and gave him an opportunity now to uh, still be paid and, and possibly find another team. With how Hogley played in the midfield at, at defensive mid, is that something you maybe will see from him, or what do you think his role will be in the future? Uh, he's not really a holding midfielder. He's a center back. Um, you know, like I said, with Kevin Lambert being gone, we've done a couple different combinations. We played with two sixes. We played, you know, um, the part of the reason also with Jonathan leaving is because Siebert is is good enough, um, but I I don't think it's the long term solution for us. Speaking of Kev, obviously there's been some drama going on in the Jamaican Football Federation, mm -hmm. as ever it would appear. Uh, of course, it's good to see some of you guys going off to you know, play for their country, but is there any part of you that's concerned seeing that kind of stuff going on? I think it's good for the players a little bit to, to stick together and to demand more from the Federation, and I understand that's what's going on, and I think things have been resolved, so uh, there was a possibility that they might all be uh, boycotting some games, but. I hear now that there's been some resolution, and that's fantastic. It's, you know, their federation should be, that team's been fantastic for many, many years. You know, like uh, CONCACAF is, it used to be just the US and, and Mexico. Look at what Canada's doing now, and uh, Honduras, Costa Rica, these are, it's not an easy qualifier anymore. And Jamaica, you know, I, I love the players from Jamaica, and I'm, and I'm glad that they stood together. And, um, and I told Kev that, I would support whatever decision he makes if, if they chose to come back. Of course, we'd be happy. But if he chooses to stay and play, I, I'm happy for him. He got 90 minutes with the national team. This is fantastic. It's um, sometimes we all have to realize that international duty, especially at the USL level, is very, very important for these players. Um, they need to be going. They need to be getting exposed. He needs that experience. And he needs to play against those type of players. And um, I think he'll be better for it. Going back to Cozy. What do you feel in terms of how he's kind of settled in, and has there been anyone in particular that's kind of taken him under their wing? <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, I don't know about individually. I haven't paid a lot of attention. I've been pretty wrapped up in the whole team dynamic, but um, I, I was fortunate. I picked him up and took him to his hotel after training the, other, the first day he was here. And you know, if you do a little bit of homework and you find out about uh, his life story, he's an amazing kid. And to, to hear him talk to you guys and how humble he is and how positive he is, um, he has every right to not be. But but man, I'm I, every day I get to spend with him. It's it makes me realize how fortunate I am to meet players like this, and how hard he works in training. It's unbelievable. I mean, he's exactly what we needed right now. Do you think it's brought any sort of spark? Just how kind of open <laughs> and happy he seems. Anytime you change the locker room for whatever reason, it brings spark. Trust me, there are guys in there that are worried about their job if they're not going to be here. Or, and that's we, we needed to do that right now. We don't want players that are comfortable. We don't want them to play in fear, but we don't want them to be comfortable. They have to compete every day. And, um, and, and it was just something that we had to do at the moment. And uh, I think we got really fortunate with the person that he is. You always talk about is the advantage over away teams coming here, but how do you get the boys used to the heat then when they first come in? It's a really good, that's even a better question. I, I think, <laughs> excuse me, um, 
I, I'm, you know, I was born and raised in Arizona, and I, I, the thin blood is is probably the biggest benefit. You know, when I lived in Oregon, I couldn't stand it. It was 60 degrees and raining was freezing for me, and um, it's never easy to get used to this. Uh, you just kind of have to do it in doses. But the most important thing for us is when we're training in the heat is what we call heat mitigation. You know, every time they get water, they've got to be in shade. They've got to get ice towels. You do everything you can to keep their brain cool, their skin temperature down. Um, the advantage you get training in the heat uh, is different from altitude because your entire body system has to work. When you train in altitude, you have a depletion of oxygen and your heart has to work a little bit more to, to get more blood cells into the muscles and to, and to get more oxygen. But when you're hot, not only does your heart have to work to, to get the oxygen to the muscles, now it has to work, everything has to work to cool your body down your brain gets fatigued quicker. So what we can do in 35, 40 minutes takes other people an hour, hour and 15 minutes. So as long as we're intense and sharp and hungry, I just don't have to keep them out in the sun very long. So the, the trainings I think can be efficient.